The Nintendo Switch is going to age like fine milk. The system just has some bad flaws that I see getting way worse with time. Now don't get me wrong, I love my Switch. I've spent a good amount of time with mine and I've owned every version of the system, and by far it's the biggest collection I own. But my god will I admit that it's got some flaws that's got me really worried for how these things are going to hold up in 5-10 to 10 years time. With that being said, I'm going to give you guys my top 3 reasons I think this thing is going to age like milk. Alright, so first off, and probably not the biggest reason that the Switch is going to age like milk, but the third-party games on the system, specifically the larger ones, they just run horribly. Now, obviously the Switch is a system that was kind of underpowered for its time, definitely underpowered by today's standards. I mean, we gotta think that this thing came out the same year that the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X did, and so it was serviceable for that time. And we got some good ports, like uh, Doom 2016, I think came out in about 2017, 2018, and it shocked everybody. It was a must-have just because it was a better tech demo than 1-2 Switch was for the system. At least that's how it felt at the time. Because of the success that Doom 2016 was on Switch and how many copies that sold, it seemed that every publisher then had their eyes on it and wanted to shove every game they had onto there. I mean, we started getting games like The Witcher on there, and we've gotten the Batman Arkham games, we've gotten, um, what is it, um, oh yeah, uh, Saints Row 3, I think we might have gotten Saints Row 4 also. Just everything that any publisher had, they tried to shove on this thing, because obviously it got really popular really fast and stayed that way and continues to stay that way. But it doesn't mean that everything that's gone on the system has run beautifully. We've had some truly awful ports come to the system, those being things like Mortal Kombat 1 in this past year and Ark Survival Evolved, and even the ones that aren't that bad just still in my eyes seem unplayable. They, the resolutions are down at 600p, they're running at sub 30 frames per second. It's just, they're just passable for somebody who doesn't care at all. And it just makes a lot of these games and the system itself look really bad. Now, some of these games have definitely been cleaned up over time with uh, new updates and patches coming out for them, but it still doesn't excuse that day one experience that anybody has with the system. And the other problem is that it's not just third-party games coming to Switch that have this issue. It's also Nintendo's own games. Granted, it only seems to be like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom that has this issue, but Nintendo is known for getting rock-solid performance out of just about any game they put out on their platforms up until this generation. And we just see it with Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild where out of the gate and even years later, they run horribly in some sections. And then you have modders coming out here who are just overclocking the RAM slightly and getting the games to run perfectly. It doesn't make any sense to me. I often wonder with the Switch successor just around the corner if that system has backwards compatibility and all the same you know, features that the Switch 1 has, if we're going to see that all these games that are targeting 720p, 30 frames, 60 frames per second, actually getting that on the Switch 2, it would make the original Switch just look that much worse and nobody would want it at that point. Alright, now to be honest, this next point, it really doesn't matter when it comes down to just playing games. It doesn't matter for the future if this thing's going to have a huge, you know, modding community, homebrew community, but it really bothers me. I mean, this system has been out for eight years now, and it doesn't even come close to matching the personality that you saw on other Nintendo systems in previous years. Case in point here, have you ever noticed that the only time you hear music on the Switch is the little chime you get when you first turn it on, the first time you ever took it out the box, or after you factory reset it? That's the only time you ever hear music on the system. Here, this is what I'm talking about. Oh! Oh! That right there is the only time that you will ever hear music on the system. There's no home music, there's no eShop music, there's no settings music. I mean, hell, the Wii U and 3DS had settings music. Do you guys remember that? And I just went back and looked at the 3DS settings music. It was a banger!
and all we have on the switch is this? In a lot of ways, the Switch doesn't even resemble a Nintendo console besides its blatant lack of features. But the one thing that bothers me the most, and has been requested time and time again since day one, is more themes. They added a whole theme section to the settings menu just to have a black and white filter. I mean, it's not even, it's not a filter, it's a dark mode. It could have been a switch somewhere in the accessibility settings, but they gave it the themes name. And so you, obviously you think, well, the 3DS had themes. We're going to get themes for the for the switch. There's going to be a theme store just like there was on the 3DS. I, I mean, it's right here in the settings menu, but it's been almost eight years now and we've heard nothing. I mean, two years ago, they finally gave us folders. We were asking for folders since day one, too. They barely gave us folders. What they gave us wasn't really folders. It wasn't really what we asked for, but it was something. It was a little piece of hope that we thought that maybe the Switch would get themes. But still, here in 2024, right before the Switch 2 launch, we still don't have themes. All right, before we go into my biggest issue with the Switch, uh, I got an honorary mention here, just because I, I don't know how big of an issue it actually is, and I think time will tell, but Back when the system launched, not only were people having problems with their Joy-Cons not connecting, being three feet away from the system, uh, they had, I, I don't know, stick drift and other issues, but scratched screens, the, the dock scratching screens was a big one that came up, and I kind of forgot about it because with the Switch OLED they said that it was fixed, or, well, the community said it was fixed, Nintendo never said anything about it, so I did a little research and I found that nobody's really come to a concrete conclusion on this. There's uh, people saying that it did happen, and then there's other people pointing out that they think it's faked, that it was a clout thing. So it's an honorary mention because it may be an actual problem, may not be. I just can't find enough resources saying whether or not it is. All right, guys, get ready. My number one problem with the Switch, and oh god is it a problem, is it the one thing that I hate about my Switch the most? And it's not even just one problem, it's one thing that has multiple problems. And that's the goddamn Joy-Cons. These things are insufferable. I swear, like, they aren't good at doing anything. The only thing that I ever use my Joy-Cons for is playing Mario Party or Super Mario Kart with a party full of people right that's the only time it's like if you need a bunch of uh, controllers then it, they've got you for that but they they're like a jack of all trades master of none right so like they're bad at being handheld and I'll get into that in a minute but I can't stand using them in handheld I can't stand using that uh the, the Joy-Con grip I spent good money to go out and buy a pro controller just because I could not stand the Joy-Con grip and they're not great on their side. Like like I said, they the only thing they do well is being a multiplayer controller. And even that, it it's rough with those uh, SL and SR buttons. But uh, just to get my thoughts in order there again on on these things, they're not good at anything. You know, they're not great in handheld. They're not great as a normal controller. They're not great as a multiplayer controller. And then the one other thing that they had going for them was being like a, a Wii Mote replacement. And we've seen this a few times. We've had a uh, Super Mario Galaxy, we've had Skyward Sword come out on the system, uh, we even had World of Goo very early on that tried to use the gyro in the um, Joy-Cons as a, a sort of Wiimote, but I swear to god every single time I use that gyro, it throws itself off base so fast. I don't know if you guys have played Mario Party recently or if you've played 1-2 Switch, but every single game that seems to use the gyro, it's like at first it seems solid, but then about three seconds later, it thinks that your hand is upside down when it's not. It, it just it makes no sense. It goes off base way too fast to ever be a Wii controller replacement. But even with all that said, that doesn't even mention my three biggest problems with the Joy-Cons. And number one is pretty obvious, I'm going to get this out of the way pretty fast, but the, the Joy-Con drift. You know, the sticks are horrible, I don't know why they seem to drift way faster than anything else. I've had, like, no controllers ever really give me any bad amount of drift to where it affected anything, but I've definitely had it with the Joy-Cons. But I will give this one a pass. While the Joy-Cons and their sticks are pretty bad to begin with, and they are pretty susceptible to drift, 
they are really easy to swap out. I don't know if you guys have ever looked into swapping out the sticks on like a PS4 controller or an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller, but you've got to do some soldering to get those sticks out and you've got to make sure like everything's calibrated correctly. At least with the Switch ones, you can just buy replacements, crack it open, unplug the old one, plug the new one in, do the calibration and you're perfectly fine. It's not even any physical calibration, it's just, you know, on the screen. So I'll give it a pass for that. At least it's easy to do. At least it's a cheap fix. But yeah, it's definitely a problem. Now these next two issues are ones that might just bother me more than anybody else. But I've heard very little people talking about it. You can find people complaining about this issue if you actually go out and look for it. But on their own, as something like as big as the Joy-Con drift issue was, there's nobody talking about these. Uh, and the first one, the one that bothers me the most, the one that made me buy a Switch Lite because I hated it so much, was the Joy-Con wobble. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to. You have to know what I'm talking about. Pick up your Switch right now, put the Joy-Cons on it, and see if they have a little bit of wobble in them. See if they're solid to the system or not. I guarantee you, if you've used your system at all in handheld, at least at any amount of time, a week or two, you've got some wobble in it and it just makes it feel like garbage like it makes it feel like a toy or something that I, I going to break just by handling it and I, I hate that so much it's the same reason that I sold my uh, new 2ds XL after I bought that I tried to use that thing as my main 3ds I really wanted a new 3ds XL so I got the new 2ds and that thing was built horribly the uh the screen would wobble back and forth all the time it just felt really frail like it was just gonna break by you using it and that's the same way i feel with these joy cons it just it gives me a really bad feeling in my hands when i try to use them i will still use my switch oled in handheld mode sometimes just when i'm using it around the house if i take it anywhere i'm bringing my switch light but for those times that i am using it around the house i don't use the joy cons on the side of the system I bought a pair of uh, Hori Split Pad Compacts. The They're so nice. They're really nice. But they've got this little piece of plastic around the back side of them that just holds it in place so well. There's no wobble. It just it feels so great. You have full-size sticks. And I will never, ever go back to the uh, normal Joy-Cons for that reason. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I do want to add. I do want to add. There is one thing that I think the Joy-Cons do very well. And uh, it, it's sad because it's something that the Pro Controller doesn't do very well. It's uh, Tetris, so the D-pad. The D-pad is horrible on the um, the Pro Controller, but on the Joy-Cons, it's just the four directional buttons, but I swear those are probably the best four directional buttons right next to the PlayStation D-pad to use for Tetris or, I don't know, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater or anything like that. All right, last and certainly not least for me, the biggest gripe I have with the Switch, and specifically with the Joy-Cons, is the plastic clip on the back of the Joy-Cons that holds them to the system. Now, I know this isn't a big deal for most people, and it really is a big deal for me. I change it on every set of Joy-Cons. It's the first thing I do. But that little plastic clip in the back, I get it. It's supposed to be a fail-safe. It's like if you drop the system, that clip breaks, your Joy-Cons are still fine, most likely the system's definitely still fine. It's there for a reason, but I hate it. I hate it so much. Those plastic clips are made of like the most fragile plastic I've ever seen in my life. And it's like, you can do your best to take those Joy-Cons off the system as to the best of your ability every single time and they're eventually going to chip anyway like it doesn't matter if a kid owns it if a kid owns it it's really bad it's real. i mean kids switches every single time i see them them joy cons are just flying off for no reason well it's because those clips are broken but even adults like there are some adults i know who have switches that have asked me if there's anything they can do about it and so i've put metal switches in theirs but it's like I had my Switch for two weeks back at launch, and I remember that right Joy-Con starting to slide off by itself. Now, thankfully, there were other issues with that Switch. I had to get a new one, so I kind of resolved that, and then I found out about the metal uh, switches I could put in there. But holy crap, it's just another one of those things that, on top of the wobbling of the Joy-Cons, just makes it feel like a cheap toy that... It's not something that you can have any amount of fun with because I'm always worrying about whether or not I'm going to make them pop off the system. So yeah, I replace them with metal ones every time. I hope to God that's fixed for the Switch 2. Honestly, the Switch 2, the perfect Switch 2 in my eyes, is a Switch Lite that's dockable and with an OLED screen. That is best case scenario in my mind because I just hate the Joy-Cons that much. 
All right, just to recap, all of the reasons that I think that the Switch is going to age like fine milk. Number one, the third-party games running like absolute garbage. I understand if people are buying this in the future, they're not really going to be buying it for the third parties. They're most likely going to be buying it for the first parties. But even some of those just have some performance issues that, again, like I said, if the Switch 2 does anything to improve upon that, the, the Switch is just not going to be the system for them. Number two, it's going to be the lack of personality in the system. It's just going to be forgettable, right? Like, I'm not saying that it's going to be a problem for anybody in the future when they buy one, but it's just, it's going to be more forgettable than other Nintendo systems, at least in recent memory. So it's just, it's going to hold the legacy of being probably the best-selling system of all time, if we're going to be real here, but there just wasn't too much to it. And three is those Joy-Cons. Between the Joy-Con drift, the wobbling issues, those clips on the back of them, hell, even some of the first Joy-Cons had some really bad issues where even if you were like three, four feet away from the system, but you had something in between you and the system, the Joy-Cons would cut out constantly. I've experienced that. I played my Switch at a desk and I had my hands under the desk and they'd cut out. It was uh, specifically the, the left one, I think, that would have that issue all the time. But the Joy-Cons, I just see aging like milk. I see them becoming a really big problem in the uh, secondhand market where people are going to have a hard time getting their hands on a good pair of them. Or if you do want a good pair of them, you're probably going to have to do some repairs yourself. Other than that, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment any issues you have with the Switch, tell me if you think I'm warranted in my thoughts, or if there's anything else about it that just rubs you the wrong way. This has been Captain SNES, signing out. Peace.